Today, I want to talk about the importance of keeping your cool and practicing that at open mics. What's up, everybody? Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world, here with another Comedy Tip Tuesday. I don't think I have any questions this week. Maybe I didn't look at last week's comments right before. Not maybe, I didn't. And so if there were any questions, maybe I'll get to them next week. I don't know how much longer I'm going to do Comedy Tip Tuesdays. I'm doing a lot of current event stuff. I'm really enjoying that. So when I do Comedy Tip Tuesdays, I'll do them. And when I don't feel like doing them, I won't do them. If you guys want to leave questions, down below in the comments I definitely will read them and answer them this week has been kind of busy for me I just got back from the road I was working for Steve Trevino which if you're not familiar with Steve Trevino very 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 funny comic very good writer I learned something new from him every time I work with Steve and so I really am thankful to Steve for letting me work with him and one thing people have to understand about me is like sometimes when I say that I've been featuring for someone or I've been opening slash featuring for for someone people will get like but I thought you headline and the truth is in my opinion headlining really is more about ego than anything else and contrary to what a lot of people would think about me I don't have a lot of ego when it comes to this if I can make just as much money if not more featuring or opening for somebody as I would working a B or a C club on the road then of course I'm gonna work for somebody and I have no problem doing whatever the job is because I can work any position and a lot of times when I'll work with people, it'll be a two-man show. So it'll just be me doing the opening and the feature. So I'm the first person to walk on the stage, but I do a feature-length set. So it's usually 25 to 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer depending on who the headliner is. And then it'll be the headliner. And so at that point, you do have to be a little more of a rah-rah cheerleader because you are the first person on stage. So there's an adjustment that way when it comes to headlining versus feature slash opening. But I pride myself myself on being able to do everything in this job like I'm an anything type of comic and so the reason that I wanted to talk about keeping your cool and why it's important to work on that at open mics is because a lot of times comics think when I go on the road I'm just gonna do whatever I want and I wish I could tell you guys that that's the way it's gonna be I wish I could but the fact of the matter is occasionally there's gonna be a circumstance or a reason where even if you're headlining you're gonna have to control your temper so I always tell tell people work on that in the open mics like anything else with open mics I believe in working on everything at open mics that's going to happen to you in real life and that's the reason I still do open mics sometimes people wonder why I still do open mics and it's because it keeps me ready for everything it gives me a safe place to actually try new jokes new things and also a safe place to exercise things like this which are important sometimes I also bring it up because last week I was at Champagne's which is one of my favorite open mics here in Las Vegas. It starts at midnight on Tuesday nights. And some of the comics that were there late asked me about, because I guess there had been someone heckling there earlier. I got there much later. I got up like two before the end because I usually go up at the end at that mic anyway. And so some of the comics had asked me how they thought I should have handled the situation because apparently there was some lady that was heckling and some of the comics got really mean with her, were really rude with her. She didn't care. She was drunk. She <laughs> She was unbothered by it, honey. Unbothered. But they asked me how th I thought they should deal with it. And I told them that anybody can be mean when an audience member is being unruly. But to me, it takes more skill. And it's not like I don't ever get mean. I do occasionally. And I'll put some clips like that up coming up soon. So I'm not pretending that I've never done it and I don't ever do it and I won't ever do it again. But to me, it's more of a skill to take a negative energy and actually turn it into a positive one and have fun with it than it is to just call somebody a name or tell them they're fat or whatever you would do when you're just being mean to somebody when you're on stage. I always remind people that it's our job to be good comics. It's not necessarily their job to be good audience and especially when you're at an open mic a lot of the open mics, Champagne's does actually make money, you know, plenty of the comics will go drink and stuff like that but a lot of the mics don't make money so if you start driving out paying customers because you've just got a negative attitude and you're being toxic with the audience which really isn't an audience they're bar patrons at that point then there's a good chance the mic won't last long or they won't want to put you up at the mic or they'll save you for last because they know that you might lose your temper but other places that that's going to be important for you real world wise real show wise not open mic is like I've had this happen 
kind of a lot in my career. The club owner's friends come in and they're super entitled because they know the owner and they're being disruptive during your set and you have to figure out how you're gonna handle that. Now, sometimes you can just slide into it and be an asshole about it if you want to, but a lot of times even with them, I'll try to turn that into fun energy even if I'm somewhat bitchy but in a fun way because I will do that quite a bit where I will cuss people out with a smile on my face and the rest of the audience will laugh. And a lot of times those people, the people that I'm cussing out or the people that I'm messing with at that point will get laughs out of it too because I do make sure that I do it in a fun way. I don't really ever want to hurt anybody's feelings when I'm on stage. I have. I know I have and I felt bad about it after I did it but I felt like it was the right move in that moment so when I say I don't have any judgment towards you guys if you guys actually do things this way every once in a while I really don't we all have to learn this job as we're doing it and you can prepare at all the open mics you want but every once in a while something's gonna happen at a paid show and you're not gonna handle it the best so I wouldn't be too hard on myself about that but I definitely would in the future think about how I want to handle it differently and so there's situations like that and then the situation that really got me thinking about it was something that happened this weekend when I was performing with Steve it was five sold out shows at the San Jose Improv San Jose Improv is a really big club it's got a balcony it's an old school theater super nice I love the San Jose Improv but what happened was we're on the Saturday late show so there was a 7 30 and a 9 30 I believe and because of the way that everything worked out the scheduling and the fact that every show was sold out like literally sold out so lines of people what happened what happens is I have to, like I said, open slash feature. So I'm the first person to go on stage. Well, for the second show, because of the way that the night worked out and the amount of people that were there and just naturally people show up late, that too, people are still getting settled and the entire balcony hadn't been seated when I went on stage. So you can imagine the amount of noise and chatter that I had to deal with. The servers are taking orders, the audience members are getting settled and they're picking out what they want to drink and if they're going to get anything to eat. And in this case, it's all necessary chatter. So if I were to get upset about it and yell at anybody, it wouldn't look good and it wouldn't be called for on any level. Technically, it would be the exact opposite of what the job was supposed to be at that point and truly unprofessional because it wouldn't even be like I could, I mean, like I'm sure I could pick a person with a loud voice and be like, hey, you shut up or something like that. But if they're doing necessary things like ordering drinks or just getting settled or like, you know, it's the server showing showing them to their seat or the host showing them to their seat, then you're going to look like an asshole. And it, I don't know if the monitor was out for that show or if it was just low. And if you're not familiar, the monitors are the speakers that are on the stage that let you hear yourself. And so I don't know if that had just been turned down or if it was out or what was going on, but I couldn't really hear myself. So I really was straining my voice. And mind you, I was having a really great set. I, every one of my sets this weekend was great. It was super fun all weekend, but I was having a great set. But in my head, it was just really hard to keep my concentration and do what I was supposed to do. And that's where I just went into like a tunnel vision and a laser focus and was just delivering these jokes. So no matter what the noise was, no matter what the chatter was, no matter what was going on inside of my head, and there was a lot going on inside of my head, including me wanting to scream, can everybody just shut up for a minute? So all of this is happening, but I have to keep my composure and basically give them the duck on water. Even though as far as they went I was just look like I was just sailing along just gliding across the water but underneath my little feet were like and so that's why I say that it's good to use those situations that would usually piss you off to work on not giving into that and not showing the audience or whoever's in the room that you are actually pissed off and it's going to be so handy for you in your career because when you do things like that yeah the audience doesn't know what's going on but I'll tell you who does know what's going on the headliner knows what's going on the club staff knows what's going on the club manager knows what's going on everybody that actually matters for you getting booked again is seeing you handle this situation with professionalism and grace and it does so much for your reputation especially when you're a person like me that people think it's difficult anyway this has been Ty Rivera the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world <laughs> <laughs>